hemoglobin in the red blood cells and delivered to the cells which need it. The carbon dioxide produced by the cells is again transported to the lungs by the hemoglobin and complex systems. The carbon dioxide carried to the lungs is discharged from the body here. This exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide continues every second all through life. Let us now have a rather closer look at the system. The hemoglobin molecule is a protein made up of 564 amino acids. In the central region are four iron atoms responsible for the transportation of oxygen. Hemoglobin's three-dimensional structure and amino acid sequence have been specially designed for the transportation of oxygen. An alteration to any one of these amino acids or to the three-dimensional structure of hemoglobin would mean that it is unable to carry oxygen and fulfill its duty. Yet, as well as hemoglobin, the subsystems that work with it also possess a flawless design. For instance, hemoglobin and oxygen establish a powerful bond when they come together in the lung. Yet this bond weakens at the tissues which stand in need of oxygen, and the oxygen is released from the hemoglobin. The system has been planned down to the finest detail. If the bond between oxygen and hemoglobin in the lung were not sufficiently powerful, then the oxygen would not combine with the hemoglobin, in which case it could not be carried to the tissues which need it those tissues would start to die. As a result, the slightest alteration to the present system in the hemoglobin would spell death. In fact, cyanide, one of the strongest known poisons, kills by attaching itself to the hemoglobin molecule and preventing it from performing this very function. All these facts once again reveal the baseless nature of the theory of evolution. The theory of evolution maintains that living things acquired their features gradually, stage by stage. Yet like the other millions of systems in the body, the oxygen transportation system can only function if it is in its present perfect state. Even the slightest alteration in hemoglobin, which forms only one part of the whole oxygen transportation system, means the system as a whole is unable to function. For this reason, it is impossible for hemoglobin and the oxygen transportation system to have come about by evolution. Even a hemoglobin molecule on its own is evidence of the invalidity of the theory of evolution and proof of the perfection of God's creation. In the Quran, God says, And in your creation and all the creatures he has spread about, there are signs for people with certainty. People do many different things in their daily lives. But whatever they do, they still have to keep breathing. Yet they never need to make a conscious effort in order to breathe. Neither do they use their free will in order to breathe. They breathe right from the moment of their birth, even in their sleep.
The brain is the command center for the whole process of respiration. A group of nerves in the brainstem and the medulla region of the brain direct the respiratory system. The nerves in the medulla send commands to the muscles surrounding the ribcage to contract for two seconds. As the muscles contract, the lungs fill with air. Then, the nerve signals from the medulla are cut for three seconds. The muscles then relax. The air in the lungs is then expelled as the muscles assume their earlier form. Directed by the medulla, breathing takes around five seconds. Two seconds for inhaling and three for exhaling. Under normal conditions, a healthy person breathes some 12 times a minute. Yet that figure goes up under certain circumstances. As you can see, my breathing rate has risen considerably. Yet it is not me who has decided to breathe quickly at this moment. My chest muscles are forcing me to. And I feel discomfort if I try to breathe slowly. Since I have just worked out, my tissue had a greater need for oxygen and my brain obliged me to breathe faster. In the same way that my breathing under normal conditions is out of my control, so is the way that I am currently breathing quickly. Control of breathing is thus independent of an individual's will. When the muscles work more than under normal conditions, they consume more oxygen. As the level of oxygen in the blood falls, the level 